to the surge in COVID-19 cases from around the world, the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19 recently reviewed the country's safety protocols. Today on Sound Health, we will look at the guidelines for the phased restrictions. I am Olasumbo Mudukwe. Thanks for staying with Lagos Television. We begin with COVID-19 updates. Health authorities have come to accept that the coronavirus can spread through the air. The World Health Organization explained that for a virus to be airborne, it would mean that the pathogen could remain and be carried through the air. Scientific evidence suggests that the SARS-CoV-2 virus can hover in the air for hours and indoor spaces, infecting people as they inhale. It added that the possibility of transmission through aerosol was more in closed-door settings, with crowded people and poorly ventilated rooms for a certain period of time, including certain medical procedures like intubation that generated aerosols in genes. However, scientists are calling for ventilation systems to be overhauled like public water supplies were in the 1800s after fetid pipes were found to harbor cholera. The study's authors comprising 39 scientists from 14 countries are demanding universal recognition that infections can be prevented by improving indoor ventilation systems. They want the WHO to extend its indoor air quality guidelines to cover airborne pathogens and for building ventilation standards to include higher airflow, filtration and disinfection rates and monitors that enable the public to gauge the quality of air they are breathing. The Lagos state government has extended the first dose of AstraZeneca vaccination exercise by two weeks. The exercise which commenced across 30 inoculation centers is to ensure more residents get vaccinated. In all, 165,778 cases were confirmed, 156,415 discharged and 2,067 deaths were recorded in Nigeria. Globally, there have been over 162.1 million confirmed cases of COVID-19, including more than 3.3 million deaths reported to WHO. Above 1.45 billion vaccine doses have been administered. My guest today is consultant public health physician, Dr. Larry Roberts. Welcome to the program, Dr. Roberts. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Reactions are still trailing the reintroduced phase restrictions. Was it too early and is there actually a need for the implementation? No, it was not too early. In fact, in my estimation, it was almost slightly a little too late because we've been watching the surge that has been taking place in India, in Brazil, in Turkey for the past couple of months, and knowing that there really is not much difference in the epidemiological profiles of our country and those countries. So there was enough cause for concern, verging almost on fear and trepidation, that if we were to go that route, we had no backup. So I'm, I'm, we, are, we are so happy, the Association of Public Health Physicians, we are so happy that the incident commander and the presidential steering committee have heeded good, sound scientific advice. And, uh, you know, it's actually not even a reintroduction. It's merely a reinforcement of already existing public health protocols. Because at no time was the, were the, those protocols ever formally lifted. Okay, we are re recording reduced number of cases on a daily basis. Is the country at risk of a third wave and a spike in new cases? 
Yes, we are grateful that we are recording, you know, these low numbers of cases, and we have to just keep doing what we are doing to maintain that status quo. You know, this is a case of don't change the game strategy mid-game, because we are in danger of a third wave, a fourth wave. We are in very real danger of that, because this Indian variant, uh, variant has proven to be uh, a lot more transmissible, and is actually attacking younger people. We simply cannot afford to have it take hold in our country because when you consider that India was the medical tourist capital of the world, Turkey following a close circle, where would we go? What, who would we depend on? Hmm. So the, the fact of the matter is we just have to keep maintaining our game strategy until this game is over. It's a very, very wicked and nasty game. But we must maintain our game strategy while this pandemic is raging because until it is taken care of everywhere in the world, nobody is safe. Now, the country has a lot to deal with um, amidst the reintroduction of the restriction. There is uh, the issue of vaccine shortage and disregard for COVID-19 protocols. How do we manage all of this? The way we are doing it, continue to give out the information and the education, continue to have, let people have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with others as to why we must keep these public health interventions. Continue to engage with community leaders, engage with community uh, influencers to put out the right information. The fact of the matter is that COVID is still with us, COVID still kills, and we simply do not have any other strategy to deal with it except these public health interventions and the vaccinations. Now, considering that India was even the, literally the factory of the world, the global factory of the world, they are now in problems. We simply have no backup until they are back online fully. And there's just nothing anybody can do about that. So we have to maintain these public health interventions until we're clearly out of the woods. The federal government says it is critical that greater ownership and responsibility for these measures are secured from both the general public and government institutions across federal and state levels with enforcement by relevant authorities. Do we need more than enforcement now? Do you share the same view? I do share the same view, and we do need every bit of enforcement, but I'm, I'm a bit skeptical about the use of the word enforcement. I prefer to say persuasion and encouragement to everybody to do the needful. If you don't have to go out, then don't. I admit that a lot of people have to go out to get their daily, their, 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 their Means of daily food and whatever, and work and whatnot. But you minimize your outings as much as you can. Certainly the one that we are winning on that India lost completely were the social mass gatherings. We simply do not need those social mass gatherings. We don't need to get into a place where there are so, there are so many people speaking in each other's faces at very loud voices without masks. We don't need it now because if people get sick, there's nowhere to go. One of the recommendations in this guideline is the use of approved rapid diagnostic tests by schools with accommodation on facilities. Do we have the capacity and structures and how do we ensure compliance now? Because not all schools have boarding facilities. It's a question that we've been discussing. In fact, it was so funny that we were in a conversation even yesterday with the chairman of the association about this and the issue that not all schools have boarding facilities. You see, if a school was fully boarding, school itself forms a bubble within which people do not go in and out and the risk of transmission is much reduced. But we have a problem where schools are either mixed day and boarding or fully day, which means that people are going in and out. The, the thing that we can do, which we have, we seem to have leveraged on and done to some, some success, is making sure that everybody wears a mask. Everybody wears a mask. WHO put out recently, I think about two, three days ago, that this disease is largely airborne transmission. So certainly wearing a mask makes complete sense. And the more you can wear a mask, the more people that can wear a mask in a public space, the less transmission of the virus that we get. And you have to also remember that 
every time the virus gets into another human being, it will undergo some mutation. That's the natural history of the virus. It will undergo some mutation. So if we can reduce transmission so that less and less virus is passing through human beings, there's less and less mutation, we have a chance of beating this thing. But it will mean that everybody has to take individual and collective responsibility to wear a mask, wash their hands regularly and often use a sanitizer where you can't and maintain a physical distance as much as possible and certainly avoid social mask gatherings. All right, talking about um, the various um, variants you just mentioned now, we all know the importance of um, genomic surveillance and genomic sequencing and um, increased surveillance. Where are we in terms of this? Are we actually ready for... Um, have we actually upgraded our genomic sequencing and surveillance now in the country? Certainly with the genomic sequencing, we are pretty much at par with the, the best in the world. We are getting genomic sequencing being done in about, oh, about, I think, five or six places around the country. It's done very fast. The scientists are on top of that. Genomic sequencing, I have no problem, which is why we were able to identify the fact that the Indian variant was in country quite early and the, and, the, and, the, and the warning went out early enough. Where we do have a bit of a problem now is on surveillance. Because surveillance, both active and passive surveillance, depends on you having a robust primary health care system. And we're still trying to build that up. We have some success in some states, largely in the southwest, but in some states, there's absolutely nothing. And without that surveillance, then we are not going to be on top of the number of possible cases, even if they are asymptomatic, if we can't track, trace, and test. So we want more of the rapid diagnostic tests. They are certainly much easier and faster to use to ramp up our surveillance. You know, so, but... Again, we are importing all these things, and the places we are importing from are themselves dealing with the problem. So we are back to simple things that are working for us, public health interventions. Right, for disregards of protocols and violations, to be precise, the Presidential Steering Committee wants state governments to set up mobile tribunal for the prosecution of violators. Security agents are also empowered to make arrests for violations under the Health Protection Regulation 2021. Do we need more than stand for prosecution to achieve this objective? Um, what is the role of advocacy in all of this? For me, I will put advocacy number one, two, three, four, and five on the priority list. Advocacy is, is really what we need. Advocacy and community engagement will go a lot further. Because even if you empower the security agencies to arrest and prosecute, what do they do with the people who broke the law? Do they throw them in jail? And how do you maintain public health interventions in the jail? So, you know, thinking through these things, I, I have a problem with, I mean, mobile courts and fines, perhaps, yes, I, I'll, I'll, I'll subscribe to that in the sense that, you know, nobody wants to be stopped and emptied of their pockets, have their pockets emptied on the road, and that should be enough of a deterrent to most law-abiding citizens. The ones who are going to flagrantly disregard the law, well, then prosecute by all means. And, you, you know, making a few examples of a few highly placed scapegoats, it doesn't work in our country because the highest scapegoat, the highest placed person is himself, you know, flagrantly disregarding the law. What do you do? You know, so yes, there's some place for that, but more importantly, I will go for advocacy and community engagement, speaking one on one to people and say, hey, bro, sis, you don't want to be a statistic. You don't want to be the cause of a death in your family or your community. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Robert, for always sharing your expertise on um, national issues and health issues now. Now, thank you so much for having me. All right. I have been speaking with Dr. Alero Roberts. She is a public health physician. and She has been speaking with us. She has been sharing her insights on the reintroduced restrictions for COVID-19 by the Presidential Steering Committee. Sound Health continues with trending health reports. Please stay tuned.
It's still sound health on Lagos Television. More to come in a moment. This is where we drop the anchor on sound health this week. Whatever you do, ensure you embrace all precautionary measures. They are the most proven against COVID-19. Stay safe always. For comments and inquiries, please send SMS to 0035 826603 or follow us on social media at LTV Social, hashtag sound health. A sound health is a sound mind. Make healthy living your choice. 